Oliver, I've been watching you trade for a while, and I've noticed that you trade Apple 85 to 90% of the time. I'm curious, why is it that you trade mostly Apple when in fact every single day there are many other stocks that present great opportunities for profits? Now, this is a very enlightened question, and it offers me an opportunity to really go into something that I spend a good deal of time reviewing with my traders. First of all, I am a firm believer that professional skilled traders are more specialists than generalists. In fact, a big part of their success is the result of their specialization. And what exactly do I mean by being a specialist? It means that their world is extraordinarily small, which further means that most professional stock traders, all right, most professional stock traders that are very skilled at what they do operate with a very, very small and somewhat insignificant number of securities or stocks that they focus on. If you think about this, the New York Stock Exchange specialist is at the top of the food chain as far as trading is concerned. They rarely have a losing day. They're extraordinarily consistent and they have a great deal of control. Of course, they have an edge that is almost unfair compared to the average trader. But still, with that being said, they are at the top of the food chain. And how many stocks does a New York Stock Exchange specialist focus on? One. Now, let's go to the next level of professionalism as far as consistency, as far as being on point, being on their game every single day, every single week of the year, the NASDAQ market maker. The NASDAQ market maker as a professional trader is highly accurate. No one is ever 100%, but they also are a group that exists at the top of the food chain. And when a NASDAQ market maker works for a specific firm, that firm assigns the NASDAQ market maker. How many stocks would you gander to guess? About two or three if they're extraordinarily good. Now, these two groups at the very top of the food chain, the New York Stock Exchange specialist trades one stock every single day. The NASDAQ market maker trades two to three stocks when they're extraordinarily talented every single day. Now, let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. And what I mean by that is that let's enter into the world of the quintessential novice, the person who really knows virtually nothing about trading, they may believe they know a lot about trading. They spend a lot of time reading or they spend a lot of time in chat rooms. They spend a lot of time on the social networks talking about the market and trading. But in truth, their trading record, their trading history, and their actual knowledge about the world of trading is extraordinarily small. We all know them. They exist. That's the other side of the spectrum. Now I ask, how many stocks do you believe the quintessential novice looks at, is aware of, is focused on, or attempts to trade? Certainly, it's more than a few. In fact, if we were to look at programs that are specifically designed for that audience, the quintessential novice, you would find that program talking about hundreds of individual stocks per session or per program airing. Why? Because it would never hold the attention of a novice market participant if you just talked about one stock every single day. But yet, when you look at the vast differences between this world, the, between these two worlds, there's a very, very valuable clue that emerges. 
what you learn is that as you move closer toward the professional end of the spectrum, you realize that the number of things that's focused on get smaller and smaller and smaller all the way down to one item. As you move toward the opposite end of the spectrum, toward the novice end, the number of things talked about, focused on, traded, tinkered with, grow in number. And this should be a very valuable clue to those who aspire to achieve mastery or some level of success in the markets. Specialization is the key. Let's think of it another way. If you were hired by a very large, very successful hedge fund to come on board as one of their traders, and you were told by the hedge fund that you are going to join our team in the equity department, and you were further told that the entire equity portfolio consisted of 112 different securities, and you were going to come on board as a team member. Do you think for one moment that the hedge fund, the manager in charge of the equity trading division of the hedge fund is going to sit you down as a trader, a brand new trader coming on board and say, listen, we've got a 112 securities, knock yourself out trading all 112. No, you are going to be assigned a desk and you are going to be assigned one to three of those securities to focus on. You're going to be given instructions and specific guidelines to direct the type of trading you're allowed to do within those one to three securities. So here's another example of entering into the professional world at its highest level. A very big, large, successful hedge fund would never say, trade whatever you want. Here's a whole market. Just go out there and knock yourself out. Here's funding. Here's your account. Here's the size. Just trade whatever you like. No. But yet that is exactly what your average novice is doing in the market today. We as professionals are specialists. We become extraordinarily intimate with a very small number of stocks or securities. We become so intimate that those stocks become our domain, our kingdom, our homes. And whenever a novice enters our kingdom, our domain, or our home, we know that they're only going to be there a very short period of time because they are unfamiliar with terrain. They are unfamiliar with the surroundings. They are pikers. And as an intimate owner of my home, as a trader of Apple, who knows every one of its idiosyncrasies, who has a very intimate feel with the idiosyncrasies of its common everyday players, the big boys. There is an edge that cannot be denied. There is an edge that the specialist has that can't be conquered, can't be pushed around. We are not strangers as professionals in what we trade. So the question again is, Oliver, why do you trade Apple? Apple is one of a few go-to stocks that I've been trading for the past 15 years. That's right, 15 years. I know Apple like the back of my hand. Since it was trading at $14, $15 a share, and that's pre-split prices. You are going to have a hard time as a novice entering into my world, all right, without this level of intimacy, beating me at the game of trading Apple. I trade what I know. I trade what I'm intimate with. I trade when and where I have an edge, and that is professional trading, traders. Now, Apple is not the only stock that I trade, but it certainly is the stock that I trade upwards of 85% of the time. I have 
a very intimate list of approximately 10 to 12 stocks that I keep my finger on the pulse of every single day, week after week, month after month, and year after year. And when I play them, I play them as an intimate family member. I do not play them as a stranger who has absolutely no clue what I'm doing. I teach my traders to be specialists. I teach them to hone their list down to five to 10 stocks that they know like family members. That is where their edge is going to come from. That is where their success as a specialist is going to be derived. I hope that answer has been clear. Stay tuned for the next. Ciao for now.